Hello everyone, welcome to session 6 of LTech 651. In today's video, I want to cover three topics. First, I want to talk about finding and reviewing existing multimedia instructional messages. Then I want to discuss ways to continue learning after this class. And then finally, because it is the last week of this summer session, I want to reflect a little bit on LTech 651 as a whole. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is Merlot. Now, Merlot stands for the Multimedia Educational Resource for Learning and Online Teaching. Now, many of you may know about Merlot, but in case you don't, it's located at www.merlot.org. And Merlot provides access to curated online learning and support materials and content creation tools led by an international community of educators, learners, and researchers. It's really a virtual repository of learning objects. It's hosted by the California State University Center for Distributed Learning. Now, let's talk a little bit about what you can do with Merlot. One of the main things and why I want to talk about it in this class is you can browse by discipline. So if you were to click on that particular button, you would be shown the Merlot Materials Library, which looks something like this. Let's take a look at the menu on the left-hand side. What's nice about this is you can filter Merlot's materials. For example, you can filter by discipline. So you might want to look at academic support services or arts or business or education, so on and so forth. Another way you can filter the materials in Merlot's library is by type. And take a look at some of the examples here. You could filter by animations, case studies, collections, development tools, e-portfolios, so on and so forth. From there, you might want to filter it down even further to focus on a specific target audience, such as pre-K or grade school or middle school. And you could even filter it by platform, whether you want Android or BlackBerry, so on and so forth. So Merlot's compilation of learning resources is really rich, and it, this is a great spot to find existing multimedia messages that have been created by different institutions and different individuals. Now, let me show you an example of how to access material. So let's say you did a, a keyword search. You might find something like this. And at first, you would see this is called DNA from the beginning. And you can see here its material type is simulation. The author is the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York. You can find out when it was created, when it was modified. And then there's also a peer review and a user rating of this particular piece of learning contents. And if we were to click on that and follow it, we'd get a little bit of synopsis about this particular piece of material. And then notice that dark red go to material button. That's the button that you would click to actually take you, to hyperlink you away from the Merlot website to the actual content DNA from the beginning, which happens to look like this. And again, this is from New York's Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. And take a look at the subtitle of this an animated primer of 75 experiments that made modern genetics. And then if you look at the very bottom text, it says the science behind each concept is explained by animation, image gallery, video interviews, problem, biographies, and links. In other words, it's this great example of a multimedia instructional message. And here's a little bit more info about how it's divided up. And of course, you could use modern tools such as H5P to build something similar to this. So this is just one example of the many thousands of materials that are available through Merlot. Now, another feature of Merlot is that you can add a material to the Merlot collection. And so what does that mean? Well, that actually means if you create an instructional multimedia message and want to share it with the world, this is a fantastic place to share it. You just create an account and then you plug in all the information, enter a hyperlink, and add that material to the collection. In addition, it also provides the ability to create new material. 
And so this is something new, relatively new that they're experimenting with. Merlot has a content builder, and that's a free website development tool. And it's accessible online for members, and you can easily become a member. And it allows you to create material using their online tool. And so with this online tool, you could actually embed your H5P content, for example. So far, we've talked about finding and accessing Merlot materials and perhaps even contributing through the production of multimedia materials. But another way that you can contribute to Merlot is through reviewing Merlot materials. On their website, they talk about the peer review information and the process. And there's quite a bit of information here, but if you want to become a peer reviewer, this is what you need to do. Individuals must be an instructor in an institution of higher education and have expertise in the scholarship of their field, excellence in teaching, experience in using technology and teaching and learning, and connections to professional organizations in their discipline. And so if you want to have your material professionally reviewed, Merlot is a great way to do it. One of the things I wanted to talk about was the Merlot peer review report form. Now, it's a bit of an eyesore, and I, I've put the link in here. It looks kind of like this, but despite the primary colors that are hurting your eyes right now, there's actually really good information in here. And I will share with you through a link in Canvas how I have modified this review form. And essentially... The Merlot group has argued that there are three areas that need to be considered when reviewing multimedia and other educational learning objects. The first area is the quality of content. And that has to do with questions like this. Is the learning material clear and concise? Is it current and relevant? Is it supported by appropriate research? And you can see the whole list of quality of content questions related to this particular part of their review process. The second part is the material's potential effectiveness as a teaching tool. And this concerns rating these materials in terms of, does the learning material identify learning objectives? Does it identify prerequisite knowledge? Does it reinforce concepts progressively? So on and so forth. And then the third and final area of the Merlot peer review form is ease of use. In other words, is the learning material easy to use? Does it have very clear instructions? Is it engaging? So on and so forth. And so I wanted to share this with you because I think this is a really valuable resource that's out there that many of you in the work that you do might be able to leverage. And of course, if you want, you could certainly consider giving back to the larger online distributed learning community by actually reviewing some of the materials that are in there. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about where to go from here because the class is actually ending. One of the things I want to emphasize to all of you is the need to develop your strengths and gain experience. We've talked about the interdisciplinary nature of interactive multimedia production. And so related to these different disciplines, think about what classes you can take to learn more in each of these areas. Also, what skills can you develop on your own related to these areas? You don't necessarily need an expensive university course to learn about the skills and concepts within these areas. And then thirdly, what projects can you take on and develop to build up a portfolio of work that you have been involved in that can help showcase your experience and your strengths in this area. So that's really something to focus on. Another thing I want to emphasize, we, we didn't talk about this much this semester, is you can think about varying the level of analysis when it comes to multimedia learning. So in this class, we really focused on the cognitive level. And the cognitive level focuses on one person and how individuals mentally process information through perception, attention, and then of course we talked all about working memory. And the idea here is we're really focusing on how humans take in information from the outside world and organize it and then make sense of it and then use it. That's the cognitive level of analysis. Believe it or not, we can actually go one level down below that to the biophysical level. 
you need a little bit of expertise in order to go down to that level of analysis. But that's really dealing with how does multimedia impact cognition, emotion, and behavior from a physiological perspective. It focuses on the anatomy and physiology of the nervous system and how that eventually, in an upstream manner, impacts how we think, what we think, and what we do. More commonly, we think about analyzing multimedia from an individual level. Now, this is distinct from the cognitive level where we're thinking about perception, attention, and memory. At the individual level, we're talking about one individual working in some kind of social setting. It might be in a school or a classroom, or it might be part of corporate training at a job, or it could even be informal learning that happens after school. But the idea here is that the individual and their brain cannot be separated from the social setting and context in which learning is occurring, or the use of the multimedia is occurring. So that's the individual level. One level up from that is the interpersonal or group level. And this has to do with, well, how do teams or groups of people use multimedia to learn and understand and communicate ideas. So that's another level of analysis. And then finally, we could talk about the highest level or the macro level of sociocultural analysis. And that's stepping back and thinking about how is multimedia, these images and words and audio and video, at a societal level, how is that impacting the way that we learn and interact and share information? So I just wanted to point out these different levels of analysis and emphasize that in 651, we've been focused on the cognitive level. Another way that you might continue what we've been doing is thinking about new technologies and new modalities. And you can do that by asking yourself, how will new technologies that don't exist yet but are emerging, such as mixed reality or virtual reality or augmented reality, how are they going to change our understanding of the modality principle, for example, and interactivity. We've talked a little bit about how multimodal materials reduce the cognitive load imposed on working memory when they're designed properly. So the question for all of you to be thinking about as, as these new technologies come online and become more and more important, what is going to be the impact on cognitive load and how can we leverage them in a way that's safe and actually results in the valued germane processing that is so sought after. Another thing that you might think about is this idea of learners as producers. And in this class, we've really been focused on the right side of this diagram, thinking about how the learner as a consumer consumes multimedia instructional messages. But there is a lot of research out there related to participatory culture and the maker movement that argue that the most powerful form of learning is when you ask the learner to be the producer of the multimedia instructional messages. And in fact, that's exactly what we've been doing in this class, is positioning you as producers of original content. Of course, that idea can be extended to the corporate training world, or higher ed, or K-12, or military training. It doesn't matter the context. The idea of learner as producer has a lot of evidence behind it. And then finally, I want to emphasize this idea of exploring how do learners collaborate with the help of computers and other communication technologies such as multimedia. So if you take a look at the article on the left by Kirshner, Sweller, and colleagues, they talk about transitioning cognitive load theory to a collaborative cognitive load theory. In other words, how does a group group of people collaborate and what is the impact on cognitive load when that's happening. And if you're interested in that type of work, you might want to check out the International Journal of Computer Supported Collaborative Learning, which is all about this focus on collaborative learning and looking at how computers and various technologies are impacting collaborative learning. So that's another way to think about multimedia and learning. All right, in the last minute, I just want to do a quick course wrap up. So let's step back and just reflect a little bit on the course as a whole. What was LTech 651 all about? 
Well, as we learned in the first session, this is a course about multimedia production. And so we started thinking about multimedia as this idea of presenting words and pictures at the same time. And of course, we weren't just focusing on that from a design perspective or a creative or artistic perspective. We were focused on that from an educational perspective. And that's why we really focused on multimedia instructional messaging. And of course, this is the idea that there are messages messages containing words and pictures that are intended to foster learning, not just to entertain. So what about the course objectives? Well, the first objective was to understand, analyze, and evaluate how people learn with and from multimedia. I hope you feel like we've talked about that. Our second course objective was to understand and evaluate interactivity and its role in learning and engagement. Our third objective was to understand and apply multimedia design principles to actual multimedia productions. And lastly, our fourth objective was to create original multimedia instructional messages using modern authoring tools. So stepping back and looking at these four objectives, I hope you felt we accomplished those in the six short weeks that we worked together. Finally, I want to thank each and every one of you. It's been a pleasure working with you this semester. Your energy and enthusiasm and your commitment to really thinking through this material and engaging with the activities and projects has really been inspiring. So thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this course as much as I did. That's all for now. Have a great final week in LTEC 651 and keep in touch and have a great summer.